Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome to Education Matters on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Carol Mon Lee. Our show today is called Career Kickstart Internships at UH Charlotte College of Business, and we're going to talk about students getting job experience with school credit and pay. Hands-on experience makes a difference in finding the right job. Businesses also get a head start in finding good employees, so internships are a win for businesses too. If you want to ask a question or make a comment, you can tweet us at ThinkTechHI or call us at 374-2014. Everyone can remember, sometimes painfully, their very first job, their first break in the world of work. Internships make that transition a natural part of a college education. Charlotte College of Business at UH has an internship program that was not a high priority for the college 20 years ago, placing only about 25 students each semester. But in the year 2000, our guest, Marsha Anderson, was hired as internship director and then as assistant dean to build the program. Currently, our other guest, Rick Farley, is the director of the Office of Internships and Career Services that oversees a program of more than 450 internships a year now both in Hawaii and internationally. So welcome, Rick. Welcome, Marsha. Thank you. And I've known Marsha for many, many years, including when she was the internship director. So I'm going to start with Marsha. So tell us a little bit about what is an internship and a little bit about the program in the year 2000 for the College of Business. An internship is, is kind of a trial run for both the student and the company. What, what I've seen the most benefit is employers get to look beyond the grades a student has to see what kind of person they are and how they will work with the office. Um, it's also an opportunity where students shed their slippers and t-shirts and shorts and they learn to present themselves professionally in the world of work. So it, it, it's a good reality check for, for all the coursework they've had. Uh, and let's see, the second part of your question was... Um, so in the year 2000, oh, yes. so internships have been around for a long time, right? And we know them from White House interns, and oh we even have interns <laughs> here at, at uh, Think Tech. We have high school and college and uh, middle school students, but the College of Business internships are focused on business. And then in the year 2000, when you started, was it a very uh, important part of the curriculum? It, it, there was an adjunct professor in accounting who managed the 20 or 25 students a semester that mostly were accounting interns. Uh, but when David McLean became head of the Scheidler College of Business, um, he wanted to put more priority on it, and so I was hired full time to develop that. Uh, that meant going out into the community, talking to businesses. It also meant following every lead that he brought back, uh, that he'd met with someone and said, "Here, here's a business card, follow up, and so we did. And I, I think it grew almost doubled the first year, and uh, Rick has, has just increased it astronomically right. since then. So it, there was a need. There was a need from the company side, and I think from the student side both. So it's really worked out well. Yeah. So it seemed like there was a shift. So up to that point, would you say, and I know this is true, for instance, in law schools too, is that the curriculum itself was very coursework heavy, right? You wanted mm -hmm. academic credit for classroom situations, but that has it been a kind of a slow realization that actually hands-on experience out in the community, out in a, the workforce, um, is actually very meaningful, very important, and actually provides benefits beyond academic uh, coursework that typically we think of when we say going to school. Absolutely, because coursework is, is great. It teaches a lot of theory that is very valuable to students, but until they actually get out there and, and practice it, they don't even know uh, if it's what they really want to do. Right. Uh, and we get a lot of situations where a student will say, I'm a, I'm a marketing major. But then you ask them, well, where do you want to go with that? And they don't know that next step. You know, where am I going with this? Am I going into advertising, going to public relations? They don't know. So the internship gives them an opportunity to go out and try something in this area and then try something in a different area until they find their niche. And once a student finds what they really are a passion for, 
then they can see their education increasing, their 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 enthusiasm for the coursework in increasing. Their and, contacts. And they oh, can't yeah. wait to get started. Uh -huh. uh, and that is a, a real positive of the internship program. It also can sometimes can show them what they don't want to do. Right. Uh, and I, I've seen many times where a student has this sense as that this is what it's going to be like, and then when they do it, they go, I hated it. I'll you never know? go back. And I said, there's nothing more valuable than finding out now, finding early right. what you don't like to do. So Shidler is both undergraduate and graduate, right? right. So is this right. program, internship program for both undergraduates and graduates? Yeah, and my, my particular focus is the undergraduates, mm -hmm. uh, but the, un the graduates also do have an internship opportunity. Um, they primarily are focused on the summer only I see uh, internships, so they do full-time work during the summer. Uh, but our program is year-round for the undergraduates. So do you have to be uh, upper class? Uh, student or can freshmen and, and sophomores well, also Well, up until only a few years ago, uh, the Shidler College was a junior, senior only program. Uh, and now we've started a program called the Direct Admit Program, uh, that for short, but Direct Admit Program where we take in outstanding young freshmen from all over the country uh, who have very high SAT scores, very high GPAs. It's very competitive. Um, and those students are allowed to start their internships right away. And so is it by semester then? Are there only semester internships? It is because it's tied to a class. Uh, however, if, if the student finds an internship that they really, really enjoy and the company wants to keep them on, we can find ways to have them register for a second class and take it again and, and extend that period. Okay, so, so what do you mean it's, it's, it's related to a class? Okay, we have an internship class uh, where they receive academic credit for the work they're doing on their internship. Um, is it based on the number of hours of the internship? Yeah, or? An internship is required to have a minimum of 150 hours during a time frame of a semester. Uh, and that breaks down to about 10 hours a week. But and that's the credit? minimum requirement. Uh -huh. And how many credits do you get for that? They get three credits. Uh -huh. And uh, the credits go towards their, their degree. So, but it's not a requirement. So the students can go through Shidler and never do an internship. Um, but is there when, a maximum number of internships they can do? No, it, it, it's time restrictive. You know, I mean, a, a student can only do so many, and we don't recommend doing more than one in a semester. Uh, and we do have students that are try to do multiple internships a semester, but. It's just a matter of, I, we, we tell them, you really want to put your emphasis on the, the quality of work that you're doing and not just spread yourself so thin that something's going to lose out, whether it be your GPA or, or the quality of work you're doing on your internship. So then how do you match? So a, a student comes in and says, I want to do an internship. I think I want to go into retail. Yeah. Um, so they hire, they uh, register for your internship, and then do they identify the internship? Well, opportunity okay. or do you? Yeah, good question. Because what we do is um, there's just me, uh, and there's a uh, thousand undergraduates. So it, it, what we've done is we've created a website where we have an ongoing live listing of all the internships that are available. So we make it. The idea is to make it as real to a student finding a job when they graduate. So they go to the website, they review all the different positions, and we, at any one time, we'll have 250 to 300 internships listed on that website currently. Um, and then the students will go in and they'll search out all the different opportunities that match their interests. And then they can submit their resume to those companies. The companies will then call them in for an interview. They have to go through the interview process and then get, the, get selected for the internship. I um, you know, and I, I like that process because I want the students sometimes to fail in the interview, interview process because that's a great way to learn. <laughs> Why, so we bring them back in the office and say, okay, what, 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 what went, went on in this interview? You know, what do you think was your weak spot? And we talk to them about how to develop their interviewing skills. And sometimes they'll send their resume out and not get any responses. And then we can pull back and look at their resume and say, OK, what is your resume stating that's not attracting attention? So we want the students to learn this process so that when they do graduate from the Chandler College of Business, they'll not only have a real good sense of who they are and get to have the professional experience, but also be able to handle it on their own. They don't have to depend on somebody else to do stuff for them. They know how to write a good resume. They know what a good interview is, you know. Right. So that's part of the process. 
So, Marcia, when you started this program, though, you had no website, right? We didn't have a website. You no. had a binder? I had a binder, right. but it worked, you know, and they sat down with it, and uh, uh -huh. usually they did at least one. We tried to get every student out for one, but that doesn't always work. But I've seen students this summer who have had three different internships, let's say a financial um, finance major, three different internships with really different settings, and so they learn where they fit in, where their major or concentration fits in with the world of work. I see. Now, uh, I've, I've been involved in internships at the law school, but we did a lot of preparation in terms of before they actually went out, looking at their resume, reviewing interviewing skills, reviewing, you know, uh, ways of, of selling themselves in a, in a in a way that would result in whether being hired or, or taking an internship. But uh, what I'm hearing from Rick is that that's not the case. You, it's more like jump in and... Oh, no. They, their resume has been reviewed. If they have already. a cover letter, that gets reviewed. And we were talking on the way down here today that um, there are some things that technology can't replace. And one is sitting down with a student and saying, tell us your story. And, and trying to flesh that out in a resume so an employer can get an, an accurate sense of who that student so is. So do you meet with all the students, each of the... Almost. I meet with a lot. Uh, it's almost impossible to see them all. Uh, and some students, to be honest, don't really need our help. Uh, they're, they're really self-starters and they've got everything together. They do have to have their resume reviewed before it gets sent out. So when they upload their resume to our website, they can't send it to a company without me or Patrick Stewart, my assistant, looking at it and reviewing it. So, and then when, if we see problems, we call them in and explain to what the situation is. We teach them how to create a better document. And, and coach them on interview yes. skills and interview clothing skills, you mentioned. Yeah, and, and we do mock interview sessions with the students. We have a, a program uh, with one of our great alumni called the uh, branding, personal branding workshop, where we teach students how to understand who they are, their core values, how to express those core values through stories. So, I mean, it's one thing to say, I'm a hard worker, but if you can tell a story about your growing up and, and watching your parents working four jobs each and things like that, to, to prove that you're, you are a hard worker, uh, it carries so much more power in an interview. So we do all those types of things. Again, there are some students that we offer them, we don't require them, and some students will take us up on them, and some students won't. Uh, although we do surveys at the end when they graduate, and we see the, the how much they're demanding as far as salary goes, and it's the ones the higher and the salaries are the ones that did all the all the preparation, did the internships, did everything right, and the ones that we never saw are the ones that are getting the lower salaries. And then you know, so we tell them up front. You know, when we meet every student when they come through at the, at the very st early stages of their time at Shiler. Uh, but still, some will decide, I can do this myself. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Sure. You know? Sure. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a really good program. Uh, and, it, and it also allows companies to ben the benefit of gaining access to the young talent right. here in Hawaii. I, I want to talk a little bit more about that, particularly after the break. But so, Marsha, when you developed the program to where it is mm -hmm. to this point now, where Rick has taken it on to much more important and bigger heights, um, did you see the business community in any way resisting, or how did they get? Uh, were they very interested in? I think generally on? they were interested, and in, uh, just anecdotally, I, I, I'd like to share one one story. I had a young woman in accounting. She was a B B student. I won't say an A student, and uh, a local firm took her and said, you know, we wouldn't normally have looked at her. But we decided to give her a chance as an intern, and she was ended up uh, getting a permanent job with them. And he said, when we saw how she performed on the job, it didn't matter what her GPA was. So it's it's to the advantage of both the employer and to the student. You and know, and it's a wonderful a, thing when that happens. Right. Did know? that employer pay her, or was she, was she just getting school credit? Do you recall? Uh, I believe she was paid, oh, and was it was paid. it was tax time. You know, the <laughs> second semester is a lovely time for interns to be thrown into into an accounting uh, internship, uh, so it worked yeah. out very well. And yeah. I, I think he was very happy with her performance. So, yeah. And most, a lot of the UH students, they want to stay in Hawaii if they can find a good job. And most of them are from here. Some of them want to go internationally, which has been a challenge yeah. for Rick. But um, it's, it's really, these are kids who are committed to this community. Right. And that's, it's really nice to give them a chance. Right. Well, we're already at break time, so we're going to take a short break and come back and talk more about the business side. 
Uh, this is Carol Mon Lee with Education Matters with my guests Marsha Anderson and Rick Varley from Shidler College of Business, and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Pete McGuinness Mark, and every Monday at one o'clock, I'm the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa. And at that program, we bring to you a whole range of new scientific results from the university, ranging from everything from exploring the solar system to looking at the Earth from space, going underwater, talking about earthquakes and volcanoes, and other things which have a direct relevance not only to Hawaii, but also to our economy. So please try and join me one o'clock on a Monday afternoon to Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa, and see you then. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Welcome back. This is Carol Mon Lee with Education Matters, and we're talking about internships at the Shidler College of Business with my guests, Marsha Anderson and Dick Varley. And Marsha started, well, actually, was handed the program when it was very small in the year right. 2000 and helped it grow to where it is now with over 450 uh, student placements uh, through Rick, Rick Varley's directorship. So we were talking before the break about the business side of it, and I just want to get a little bit more into that. Um, so we have these undergraduate students primarily, although we know that graduate students mm -hmm. also go through internships, uh, being able to experience the business community through an internship for a semester. They get credit, they may get pay, um, and of course this opportunity to experience and decide whether this is the field for them. But well, let's talk about the business side. So how do you identify the businesses? And we talked about the website, and are there other ways that students can learn more about the businesses? Well, we, we first of all, we go out to the business community, and we, we also look at all the who the major employers are. We'll communicate with their human resource department, sit down with them, explain what we're looking for, and see if they are interested. Many of them by now are participating with us already. Many years. So it's just a matter of updating it on a yearly basis because people change. Um, and so uh, we, we were. I'm very beneficial. Uh, I, my program is a benefit of having her set a really strong <laughs> foundation to the program. Uh, and then at, right as I got started, uh, one of our professors um, uh, had gone out, uh, Shirley Daniels, mm -hmm. had gone out and gotten a major grant, a national grant for a entrepreneur internship program, which allowed me then to go out into the community and find startups. And then we were able oh, so to provide the startups with interns and we, the, the, the grant program paid the students hourly wages. So the startups didn't have to pay a penny. Wow. They got amazing young people in a situ at a time when they really needed, desperately mm -hmm. needed help to get their, their program started. So we got a lot of good press as a result of that program at the time. And then a lot of companies were contacting our office because they saw that in the news, both on television and print. And so we started, that, it really blossomed at that point where we saw a lot of companies coming to us. And at, at the stage we're at right now, we were getting on a daily basis two or three phone calls a day, always companies trying to start new programs and get something going. So I don't have to do a lot of uh, outreach anymore. Well, it, I know, it's more of them coming to us. Right, I know we also have a couple of um, uh, images, uh, Rob, we can bring them up. And so what do we have here? It looks like two students, uh, no, a student and an employer talking to? Yeah, we do, a, a, we have two career fairs, uh -huh. uh, one in the fall and one in the spring. And we generally have about 75 to 80 companies come and um, they are there to hire and also to hire interns. Uh, and it's a great opportunity for the companies to come in and sit down and meet our students face to face. Uh, it's, it's really important for our students to put a face to that, that person that they're applying to. And we've had situations where, I mean, Boeing's a good example, where we've had a student walk right out of class, walk right up to the Boeing booth, 
meet them, impress them, and get a, an offer right there on the spot to do an internship in Seattle. Um, and we were at one point probably placing about 10 to 12 students in Seattle every summer at the Boeing uh, plant. And that was, and they, most of those converted into full-time positions once they graduated. So these are business students. Yes, going to primarily Boeing. finance. Finance, yeah. I see. And a lot of analyst type opportunities, and some some in marketing, but mostly in the financial analyst side. So that talks. So that brings up another interesting topic. So if they're outside of Hawaii, whether it's mainland or international, who pays for their travel and their expenses? Depends. Yeah. You know, a company like Boeing, they they pay they, the, pay, they pay yeah. the bill. That's a wonderful yeah. opportunity it's for great. the students. Yeah. If 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 it's if it's something the student sets up on their own, uh, we've got a student right now doing a marketing position in Manhattan, and and another doing a finance on Wall Street. Uh, they set it up on their own. They applied. They got accepted. Uh, the marketing one, she was able to get a grant for it, so she got a travel expense paid for. Uh, the gentleman is on his own. So those are semester ones that semester, they're taking, yeah. they they're come, undergraduates. They, summertime, yeah. Oh, undergraduate summer program yeah. uh, internship. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of internships on the mainland are summer only. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have a benefit here that we go year round. Yeah, our companies are, are available all the time. But it's always by semester, is that right? So it's you by semester, start in yeah. Semester. We can go, again, as I mentioned earlier, we can go longer if, if it calls for it, uh, but it's generally a semester at a time. Is there any um, requirement for journals or Reporting. How, how do you keep track of your yeah. students actually showing up and doing the work and having the businesses, you know, confirm to you that yeah. they're... The students are required to turn in papers to me uh, throughout their internship. Uh, and then at the completion of their, their internship, the employer does a supervisory evaluation. So whoever was assigned as a supervisor will, will create, uh, complete an evaluation form of the student's performance. Um, and yeah, the, we used to initially, because we had the 150 hour requirement, we used to ask them to do turn in timesheets. I stopped that quickly because yeah. it was too way many. too much trouble. Yeah. And I, what I found was we never had a problem with the student not getting enough hours. Most of the time, the students were coming in halfway through the semester saying, I met my minimum requirement, now what do I do? <laughs> and I said, just keep going. Right. You know what I mean? Because uh, it's always been stated it's a minimum. And I said, whenever you're trying to learn something, do you put in the minimum or do you put in the maximum? Um, and so most of our students will put in a lot more hours than is required. So, Marsha, when you started ramping up the program, what was the pay salary scale in terms of, a, was it hourly or? Uh, it probably would have been an hourly and mm -hmm. probably not much over minimum wage, yeah. as I remember, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, and some of them weren't paid, so we've gradually I think move them more and more to a paid situation, which pleases everybody, really. So they get paid, but do they get credit then? Yes. They can get credit? And pay. And pay. Yeah. Uh, there's no requirement that you do an internship, no. so they're not satisfying that. Correct. Okay. And what about international internships? Did you have any when you were starting in the U.S.? I don't think so, no. Uh -huh. I, I, but one thing I have to say is Rick is really good at tracking alumni. So if a student, say, wants to go to Japan, for a summer internship, he has a list he can draw on and tap for that student. It, so it, as the alumni have met success all over the world, I think there's more possibilities for international internships, mm -hmm. which is useful, especially for students who want to return to their home country, yeah. because they, you know, that internship gives them the start. So where are some of your internships? Well, internships? generally what happens, though, with the international internships, because it is a job, and you have to meet that country's work requirements mm. and legal, legal status. So what we recommend students do is, if they're going to do a study abroad mm -hmm. in Copenhagen or London or Spain, wherever our students go, uh, if they secure an internship through that school, then they're able to get the, the legal paperwork and the legal pa the work permits in that country to work an internship. So the students. We help them. We help them in the preparation aspect of it, but they're on their own when they look for those kind of things internationally. But so many of our students do international study abroad now. Uh, for a that, semester. For a semester. And, uh, but so they take full advantage of it while they're there. They're not just there to play and have fun. A lot of them will, will find internships. Uh, so they'll be taking some coursework as a student. Yes. They'll be, of course, learning culturally and living among 
the community there, but also doing an internship. Right. I've got a, I've got a student right now doing a, a banking internship in Germany. Uh, I have a student who just turned in his final paper. He did a, a, a management internship. He did, worked with a consulting firm, and he was in uh, Mexico City half the time and in Sao Paulo, Brazil for the other half of the time. Had a phenomenal experience. So, and do many know, of these evolve into permanent positions when some do? Graduate? Yeah, some yeah. do. Uh, but you know, it, the, the reality is is that it's an amazing experience. That usually will the students will grow so much that when they come back, their their confidence level is such that when when they saw initially this is their potential. Now they see this as their potential. Right. And it's, it's so funny to watch. I had a student who did a study abroad. He's from Maui. Never, his first trip on an airplane had been from Maui to come to University of Hawaii to go to school. Uh, and then he got a study abroad in London, and he wasn't sure if he should do it or not. He was a little scared about it. But when he came back, I sat down with him. He had visited every country in Europe. He had made it all the way down to <laughs> yeah. Istanbul, Turkey. Um, and then when I was asking about his career goals, he goes, I think New York. I, th I think I'm, I'm ready, you know? And I'm going, this is not the same person I saw when he left. So it's an amazing opportunity that we really encourage. And I think with, with Scheidler and the grants that we can offer our students, they many times get to do these study abroads and they get a nice grant to cover the cost. It's great. It's very exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so currently we have a very interesting job market, right? It's yeah. a tight market, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so how does that affect the internship? I assume that's good for our students. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The, 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 there are there are low employ unemployment. Yeah. yeah. So does that mean the businesses, at least among those in our community, are even more interested in looking for interns? I would say desperate. Desperate. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. it's, it's, we're in a really good situation right now, uh -huh. and and uh, so. Uh, a lot of them, if they if if they complain that they're not getting enough candidates, we can say, well, maybe you should pay more, uh -huh. you know, or maybe you take a non-paid to a paid, mm -hmm. um, and so it, it's it's basic economics, you know what I mean? If, if it's supply and demand, right. uh, so we're in that we're in the demand stage right now, where uh, the students uh, know they have a lot more options available to them, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, Hawaii is a little bit behind uh, the curve when it comes to salaries. Uh, yes. And we're still, even with the tight market, we're still not seeing the growth in salaries like we would expect to see. Uh, but, for instance, we've got some interns that are getting twenty to twenty-five dollars an hour oh my goodness. as an intern, and that's more on the accounting side, right? With of the course. big accounting firms, but it shows they're doing, they're of value to the company, and the company is it's it's value to them to pay them. Right. So. Well, we only have a few more seconds left, so before I. Uh, Sign off. I want you to look in the camera for Rick and tell our viewers how they can reach you uh, if they have either interest in be being interns or uh, a business that might want to use our interns. Yeah, the best way to reach me is my, my direct line at the University of Hawaii is 956 6972. Uh, I can also be reached through email at rvarley at hawaii.edu. Um, Contact me, tell me what your needs are, uh, whether you're a student or an employer. I'll be happy to sit down with you and we'll figure out the best way to make it work. Uh, with a new company, I'll be happy to come down, I'll visit you, I'll look at the job site, see where you, you uh, anticipate putting your intern, what kind of work you want to give them, uh, and then I can help identify good candidates for you. So uh, we work very closely with the companies. I know that the dean at the business school is very positive about, he wants the, the business school to be involved with right. the local business, not yeah. be the ivory tower type of attitude. So right. we're, we're ready, we're ready to work with any company or any student that's interested in working with us. Great. And I know Marsha was here this summer to actually work with the interns as a mentor and uh, brought you back, and that was a wonderful gift for our students. So oh, it was fun. <laughs> thank you both, Marsha and Rick. And uh, that brings us to the end of our show today. We have enjoyed bringing it to you. I'm your host, Carol Monley. We've been talking about Career Kickstart, internships at UH Shiler College of Business and how hands-on experience makes a difference in finding the right job. And it's a win for businesses, too. So thank you both, and we'll okay. see you next time. Aloha.